Breaker Broke 23. So today I'm going to show you guys how to wire up a three prong dryer outlet. Okay, necessary tools. First off, you need a quarter inch nut driver. Take off this rear access panel. Do this with one hand. I'm going to set that aside. What we're going to do is check and make sure this is wired up correctly. All right, so here is our ground, okay? Air quotes, ground, okay? We have a hot, a neutral, and a hot. This neutral up inside here, way up in there, there's a pigtail that joins these together. So this is actually joined together here, okay? For a three-prong hookup, we're actually going to leave this hooked this way. Okay? So now, what we have here on this dryer, we have the hole, and this is where we're going to put our wire through. And this is not a strain relief, but it is a little protective insulator. Your uh, dryer will not come with a uh, strain relief, so you're going to want to run to the hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever, and grab one. This wire kit here, this door or uh, dryer cord kit actually came with a strain relief. So I've never seen one like this. So yeah, we'll use it and see what happens. What I did is I put the little strain relief through, and you want the rear pieces to back up against the inside of this lip right here, and you're gonna want to clamshell it together. I probably could have taken this little felt piece out, made it a little easier on myself, but I didn't. So we're going to see. So we're going to see how this fits. So what I like to do is I like to take these this cable, and we want to put the we want to uh, fashion it so the f the flat part of the cable is going to mesh up against here. So we don't want it backwards like this. Okay. We want it like this, all right? And it's pretty basic. I mean, the cable's set up to hook it up. This is kind of a no-brainer. So the center one is going to be our neutral, hot, hot. I've had people ask me, can the hots be reversed? I don't know why you would want to do that unless you put your cable on backwards. But yes, they can. The main thing is you want to have your neutral in the middle. That has to be. And really, you can't hook this up crisscross, like I say, unless you do it the wrong way. So, watch me flail. I'm going to try to do this with one hand. So I'm going to push that through there. Push a little more through. This is hard to do with one hand, but we'll get it. All right. I'm going to go in the bottom here, right here. Take my other hand and push that in, and we're going to go up like this. We're going to kind of bend these back and do it that way. Now, here's the deal we're going to use a nut driver. I like to use a nut driver versus a screwdriver. I have pulled these out and accidentally dropped one, it's not the end of the world. Unfortunately, you have to pull this whole back panel off to access it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my nut driver. And if you don't have a quarter inch nut driver, get you one. If you're a homeowner, you got to have one. So just get a tool set, you know, just a little go down to Home Depot or something or Harbor Freight and get you a tool set. So what I'm going to do, watch, I'm going to drop one here on camera. Okay, what I do is I grab it with my finger like this. Like I say, this is why I like to use a nut driver. I'm going to put it through this lead right here. I'm going to put it in here and screw it in. So let me do that and I'll come back to you here. Okay, so I started this because I needed two hands to do this. And then what I do is I put this screw in almost all the way but I don't cinch it up, okay? I let this move around a little bit. It just makes it easier to manipulate these other wires. So I'm gonna do the neutral and I'll come back. Fast forward 10 seconds later, we've got the neutral hooked up. Remember, hot, neutral, hot. 
we haven't changed the way this isn't twisted or anything like this so this keeps it lets us index this and keep it the same the deal is is when they cut these cables at the factory it's all one length so I like to leave these loose so I can kind of move them around as I go for the final cinch up so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take this one off Turn it like this. I'm going to take this. Oh, see, I almost dropped it. It's impossible with one hand. Okay. I'll try this again. Let's get this closer. No, I'm not going to be able to do that. So, because I don't want to drop that down in the back of the washer, I'm going to pause the camera real quick and hook that up. Okay. So, I've got this started here. So we've got hot, neutral, hot. All right, now here's what I want to do. I kind of want to fashion these so they're nice and straight. I don't want to have them pulling because what happens is uh, sometimes if you use this uh, dryer or a dryer through multiple, multiple cycles, these wires can get warm. Don't worry, it's not a big deal. It's actually why we have the strain relief. A lot of people do not use the strain relief because they don't want to run to the hardware store and grab one some of these wire kits don't have them if you picked up a wire plug kit that may be uh, goodwill or something you know they're never going to have them but this is definitely uh, a must have so what i like to do is i like to kind of get these straight to where i like them i tighten these down i'll cinch these down then i'll take this straight relief and i'll push the cord back just a hair Okay, so it's not pulling because that's what a strain relief is. So when you move this washer or the dryer in and out back and forth to maybe clean your lint chute or something, you don't just keep pulling them back and pulling them back and you could create a dangerous situation. So I don't like to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, uh, pause the camera real quick. I'm going to straighten all this up and then we'll show you uh, the end result. Okay, so I have all these cinched down the way I want them. I have the strain relief the way I want it. You can't move it remember the idea of the strain relief is so you don't pull these out now if we were to do a four wire hookup or a four prong hookup because this white wire it doesn't matter if it's white or green with a yellow stripe it's still the ground slash neutral so if we were going to hook this up to a four prong outlet what we would do is we would take this off put it on this center lead or you could take this off wrap it up in tape because remember up in here they're pigtailed together this wire is hooked to the wire that goes to this lead up inside here somewhere maybe three inches up so you can do a couple things you can take this lead put it here then what you do on your fourth wire on your uh, four wire pigtail is you would take the ground and hook it to here and what that does is that gives you an actual chassis ground what they're doing with a three wire hookup is they're sharing a chassis ground I'm just gonna call this a chassis ground with a neutral and like I say it's the old school way but that's how they did it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, plug it in and uh, do a check all modes and functions just make sure it works and heats so I have up the unit plugged in as you can see we need to do laundry I have the unit plugged into the wall I'm just over here on pretty much any mode and I've got this in the on position so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit push it and see if we uh, get operation there we go she's a runner all right yikes that's loud all right so it works what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the cover plate back on before I put the cover plate on I'm gonna unplug it all right and we'll put the cover plate back okay, on. so I've got us all hooked up powers on this is all buttoned up looking good all modes and functions work very well uh, but what I do want to show you is um, why we've gone from a three prong to the new more modern four prongs because I've had people ask me that so 
like I like I said before, remember, we have this neutral slash ground, and what they're doing is they're sharing ground and neutral together. And that was the old school way to do things. It's just the way they did it. Now, depending on who wired your house, um, this could be a dangerous situation, and it kind of is anyway. And this is why we've gone to the four wire hookup, because then there's no question you actually have a real ground. Your ground is not sharing neutral. And here's what happens. I'm gonna take my trusty little meter here. I'm gonna put one end of it into an outlet. I'm gonna take the other end and I'm gonna to touch it to the chassis ground. I'll be darned, look at that. 120 volts. Okay, so this is three ground, or this is a three prong setup. When they went to the four prong setup, it eliminated this. All right, all right, you guys. Uh, I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'm going to post that little schematic up here at the end. Have yourself a nice day. Now I can do some laundry.